God bless you, everyone. Praise God. Praise God. We thank you for thank God for another beautiful day. And I thank God for all of you who you show your support to me. I appreciate it. God bless you. I pray that the Lord continue to bless. Now, today we're going to go to the book of Acts. We see the enemy of the church. Oh, the enemy rise up against the church. Oh, oh, Herod the king rise up against the church to kill all the leaders of the church, the apostles who God ordained. But God stepped right in, in the middle of it. Herod killed James, and he was ready to kill Peter and Barnabas and Saul. He wanted to kill them one after each other. So when he killed James, then he said, okay, the Jew was pleased. Those unbelieving Jew believe that the church should not prevail. This is the fifth persecution since the church started in Jerusalem. But before we go into the martyrdom of James and when Peter was supposed to be killed, let's go to the throne of grace. Are you sick today? God is still doing miracle. The miracle of what is done in the book of Acts and was done in the book of Acts and is still doing. You can receive a miracle today. You might be sick, you might be downhearted, but cheer up, God is not dead. He knows all about your trouble. He knows all about your sorrows and what you're going through right now. Let's go to the throne of grace and believe God for a miracle. Financially, spiritually, and physically, God cares about us. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come boldly to the throne of grace. We are there plenty of grace to help in time of need. Our great high priest, we can go to you any time of day or night. And Lord, we come, Lord God, asking, oh God, you have mercy upon those who are listening and have special need today. But we pray for those in authority. We pray for all our leaders of this country. Lord, we see all the wars and the things that are taking place in our city and our town and our country. So we are praying, God, for your, your divine intervention. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for touching them individually right now. Touch our leaders right now, God. Our law enforcement and all of those in authority. We are praying for them, Lord. Thank you for all of those. Our farmers, Lord. We ask you to continue to bless them that we might have food on our tables. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for healing those who are sick today. There are many listening today. They are spiritually, physically sick. We are praying for some sickness today. Cancer, Lord Jesus, is nothing too hard for you. We pray, oh God, that the mighty power of the Holy Spirit touch that one is cancer today. Touch that prostate cancer. Wherever it is in the body right now, we pray that the miracle working power of the Holy Spirit touch you right now and make you whole. In the mighty name of Jesus, right is it nothing for God. We curse it with a curse. And we thank God for healing. We thank God for miracle. Let the miracle work in power of the Holy Ghost. Touch all of those who are sick today and make them every bit old. And we thank you, Lord, that baby is crying and screaming. Lord God, we have to touch that baby right now in Jesus' name. If you believe that God heal, if you believe in the miracle work in power of the Holy Spirit, that do the most power of the Holy Spirit, give the Lord a praise and glory and believe that he's able to heal. It's not all about how you feel, but it's who you know that is able by his stripes we are healed. In Jesus' name. Amen. We thank God for those who are praying and still praying. We are living in perilous time right now. And we see the church in the book of Acts. When Peter was cast into prison. When James was killed, the James, the son of Zebedee, Herod, Herod Agrippa, become enemy of the church, King Herod. And when the highest authority come against the church, who do we need? Jesus is the only one that can save and deliver. Because when the high authority come against the church, whatever the king says must work. But greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. 
when now Herod killed James, the son of Zebedee. So the Jews were happy because the church will not prevail. They think the church won't prevail. So they're going to take the leaders, the apostles, one by one. So it's next day to put Peter into prison to kill him. But the next day was the day of the unleavened bread when Peter is supposed to be killed. They call it Easter. But it's the day of the unleavened bread. And Peter was in prison with soldier guarding him. Corners of soldier guarding Peter day and night. So he could not move because he's supposed to be killed. He's in solitary confinement and he was in chain. So Herod appointed him a day when he should be killed. But they said the next day is going to be unleavened bread. How are we going to kill somebody on that day? And how are you going to have unleavened bread? The lamb that was slain in, in Exodus chapter 11. When, when the lamb was slain and the blood on the doorpost. It's a holy occasion. So how are you going to kill somebody on that day? How are you going to kill somebody and say you're worshiping God? They don't know who God is. They don't know the house from God that we serve. They don't know Jesus was able to deliver. But saints continue praying because the effectual favor and prayer of the righteous man avail it much. And now we're going to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Now, that the time, now with the time of, of the king, the king stretched out his hands against the church to kill the apostles. They first killed James. And they, oh, they were rejoicing. We're going to get them one by one now. So after they killed James, because the Jews were so happy about it, they put Peter into prison. Peter was cast into prison. And then were the days of the unleavened bread. When he had, when he had, when Herod appeared, apprehended him, when he was apprehended, and that day, the day of the unleavened bread, the next day, they said they can't kill Peter that day. They're going to kill him the next day. They put him into prison and deliver him to four coroners of soldiers to keep him intended after Easter, after the unleavened bread. They call it Easter. That's the first time Easter mentioned in the Bible and the only time. The pagan holiday, they call it pagan holiday. It's the time of the unleavened bread, the Passover lamb. And how are we going to celebrate the Passover lamb and keep holy days and, and the next day kill him? You know that's not God. That's not God to kill the people of God. That's a devil. He's of the devil. Verse 3, verse 5. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prior... Prayer was made around the clock, day and night. They take it by turn to pray. And you know, they were praying, truly praying in that house. So some come night, some come midday, some come. It's kind of their working time. But around the clock, prayer was made for Peter. You know, James chapter 5 and 12 said, The favor, effectual, favored prior of the righteous man availeth much. And he said, Is there any sick among you? Call for the elders of the church. Is there any trouble? Is there any sorrow? Is there any broken heart? Is there any problem? Is there any prison problem? Whatever it is, family problem, call for the elders of the church and let them pray the prayer of faith. Because the effectual favor and prayer of the righteous man, God hears. Psalms 20 and 1. The Lord hears thee in the day of trouble. 
And he send you help from the sanctuary. He promised to send help from the sanctuary. And he did just what he said. He's very near to those who are of a broken heart. He's very near to the righteous. You might be going through sickness in your body and hard times that you don't believe that you can make it. But God is very near. He's a test of your faith. To see how strong our faith is. Sometimes you go and your pastor might ask you for a testimony and you say, you don't have a testimony because you haven't been through the test. When you've been through the test, your testimony becomes a sermon, a help to others who are going through the same thing. Because when you've been through something, you, you can tell somebody you can make it. Because with the same deliverance that the Lord bring you out, he's going to let you speak to somebody else who can rejoice their heart to know that God is still with them, regardless of how you feel. You, you might be in prison right now, wherever you are. And you believe that God is able. Some people in prison wrongfully like Peter. And God deliver. He will deliver a promise. And when Herod would have brought him out the same night, Peter was sleeping behind his two soldiers in chain. He was in chain. And the keeper before the door. It was in chain. And the, the keeper before the door. So, you know, they, it was carefully watched. That he should not move. Why so much of them have to be watching one man? Because they know that their God is mighty to deliver. They know. So they watch him carefully. That God, They believe that God couldn't deliver Peter. But we're going to see the mass deliverance that God brings to Peter. And they believe that they can get him because they killed James and it was okay. They don't care nothing about life. Verse 7. And when Peter, the keeper was before the door and kept the, the prison. You, they kept it at the door and at Peter's door and, and keep the chain. So therefore, if you are in chain, that means you can't move. Because you're chained, the door is chained, and there's someone at the door. Someone at the gate, you can't move. Verse 7. And behold, an angel of the Lord came upon him. And a light shined in the prison. A light shined in the prison. Oh my God. So much God love us that you could come into the prison and shine a light. And tell us, get up. The love of God. And the light came and came upon Peter in the prison. Verse 7. And he raised, and he raised him up by the side. And, and he said, he, he tapped him by the side. And said, Peter, you were sleeping between the soldiers. And the soldiers were right there. He was sleeping between the two in chain. So the angel tapped him on the side. Peter, get up. Gird yourself. Cast your prison garment aside. Gird yourself. Whether Peter had some clothes there, and where the angel clothed him, I don't know. He didn't say. But he said, cast those prison garments aside. Cast them aside, Peter. I come to deliver you. Peter, all of a sudden, the chain is broken. The chain is broken. And I hope somebody's chain will be broken today. The chains are gone. And he said, it, it's more than saying, arise quickly, quick. Arise quickly. Toss your garment about you. Toss it somewhere. You know? And, and, and his chain fell off of his hands. Verse 8. And the angel said unto him, Gird up thyself. Put on your sandals. And cast those ugly garments from thee. And follow me. Your chains are broken. Follow me, Peter. I'm going to take you past all the gates, the high-end gates. And all of these things, I'm going to take you straight home. But Peter think it was a vision. He can't believe. They were praying, but they don't believe. 
You know, you can pray, but do you believe that God is able? You know, some people don't believe that's why they can't get healed. You, you believe that God is able to get out, out a chair or stretch your hands out, your crooked hands. One lady said, when I pray for one lady, she said, oh, my hands are crippled. They are paralyzed. And I take her hands gently and lift them up. Stretch out your crippled hand if you believe. Lift them up. They couldn't go over your head. Just lift them up in faith. The same God that healed Peter is here. And you might have a crooked hand that can't lift up. Or a feet that can't stretch out. Or a heart right is in the vein that can't move. You, you know, the next day after you get prior, what you said, my arthritis. It's not yours. It's gone. Your chains are gone. Your chains are broken. Peter's chain was broken. And hear what happened in 9 verse. And to follow me in the 8th verse. But in the 9 verse, he went out and followed him. And he knew not that it was an angel. He think it was a vision. It was a dream. How could I be up between two soldiers and come to the iron gate? But he said, when he come to the iron gate, he knew not it was a vision, which was done by the angel. And true, though he saw a vision, he thought he saw a vision. Verse 10, and when they were past the first gate, where the gods were, he passed the first gate. Now, now they have a lot of gates and door and guard, well guarded. And the second guard, they came unto the front. They came unto the iron gate. There were two iron gates that together. The angel did not have to do anything. When the power of God reached the iron gate, they hoping freely. The Bible said they open freely, high and gate open freely. And it and, and it went straight into the city. With the open and, and the horn. And the horn occurred. And they went out and passed through the street. And when it passed through the street, when it was out of arms way, the angel depart. And Peter said, Oh my God. This is real. God is real. The mighty power of God is with me. They do the most power of the Holy Ghost through the angel. Come and release me. Saints of God, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you got to do the most power. You got God's favor. It's God's favor. We are filled with the Holy Spirit. It's the favor of God. Bring Peter out of the prison. We don't understand why James have to die. But Jesus said in Matthew 24 that some of us are going to die for the sake of the gospel. Because it's going to bring glory to God. And James is going to wear a martyr's crown, which is one of the greatest crown for the glory of God. Not everyone is going to die a martyr. And some people make themselves a martyr. That's not of God. You might lose what with God. And when Peter was come to himself, verse 11, and when he was come to himself, he said, Now I know that surely the Lord had sent an angel to deliver me out of prison. I know for sure. Now you've got a great testimony now. I'm going to tell the world about Jesus. I'm going to tell the nation about this. I'm going to tell him that the prayers is answered. I'm going to tell him, oh God, answer prayer. I'm going to tell him, oh God, sent angel to deliver. The angel of the Lord encamp it round about them that fear him to deliver. Psalms 34 and 10. The angel of the Lord encamp it round about them. He's very near to the broken hearted. But if your prayer not answered today, go to the throne of grace and say, Lord, I don't feel like my prayer is answered. What have I done, Lord? Maybe I need to repent. Sometimes repentance is necessary to get healing. Because sometimes people have God mess up. We all come short of your glory sometimes, Lord. Lord, I don't know if I come short of your glory in some way that prevent my prayer to be answered. 
repentance bring forth healing. David said, Lord, when I cried to the Lord, and when I repented of my sin, Lord, I was healed. I was delivered. So how we should search ourselves and see if we are in the spirit. Why? Our prayer is not answered. And if somebody prayed for you, people of God, a man of God, a woman of God, a person of God, a child of God, pray for you, and you don't receive it. You have to receive it. Sometimes you get healing. You're not going to be jumping out the chair right away. But little by little, you believe God. And some healing come gentle. That's how God do it. And some people can jump out of a chair right away and say, I'm healed. This is, your, this is God. It all depends on your faith and how God wants to heal. Verse 12. And Herod from that, from, from Herod, and, and, and out of the hand of Herod, God delivered him out of the hand of Herod. And from the expectation of the people of the Jew. All the Jew was expecting him to be killed. God delivered him out of their hands. And when when he had considered this thing, he came to the house of Mary and Martha, where they were praying. The house of Mary and Martha, that's where they were praying. And he came to the house. And when he knocked on the door, in the middle of the night, in the wee hours in the morning, and when he knocked on the door, you know, the, the maid, the young girl, they call him maid, come to the door and said, it's Peter. The others inside, they said, you are mad. Peter is in prison. They were praying. They were fasting. They were petitioning in heaven around the clock. So why can't you think Peter is at the door? Peter beckoned to him and said, it's me. Peter was shocked himself. He was in shock. But he said, it's me. And when they opened the door, they were full of astonishment and greet him. But Peter decided, that I'm not going to stay at this house. I'm going to go where the Lord lead me to go. And Peter knocked at the door. And at, at the door. he knocked at the gate first. And then he knocked at the door. And he opened the gate. And when she, when she knew, when, when the girl who opened the door knew that it was Peter. And then, verse 15, and they said unto, unto her. And then said unto her. And they said unto her in the house. Those in the house said unto the girl, you are mad. This could not be Peter. But Peter continued knocking. Keep knocking. You don't get a prayer answer. Nobody believe you. Keep knocking. You can't get a prayer too. Keep knocking. Keep knocking because God will open unto you. And the door will be open if you keep knocking and believe by faith that God is able to heal. God is able to deliver. Keep knocking. Lord, I don't get my prayer answered yet. Lord, I need to hear from heaven. Sometimes it's not in a hurry. But it all depends on your faith. Prayer doesn't answer the same way you expect it to be. I don't know what way they expect Peter to come out of prison. If they were praying, but Peter deliverance. Maybe they were praying and believing that when he go to the trial, he would be free. But God gave him a miraculous deliverance. You need a miracle today. The same Jesus. The same mighty power of God is able to deliver you. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through. You might have a loved one in prison who is innocent like Peter. Keep knocking on heaven door. Keep knocking. Keep seeking the Lord. But you were praying and you said, I've been praying for a long time and nothing happened. If you know the person is innocent, keep praying. Keep knocking. Keep asking God. The reason why something takes so long is because we stop knocking, we stop seeking, we stop calling upon God, we stop believing God, 
we start fasting, we start praying with our greatest weapon, the weapon of our warfare. They are not carnal, but they are mighty to God in pulling down stronghold, pulling down every stronghold, every prison door, every, every, every works of the devil. This weapon is not carnal, but it's mighty to God. His spiritual weapon, our spiritual weapon that God give us. He give us a mouth to speak deliverance. He give us a mind to fast and pray. To invoke the anointing of God in our life. If there's no time to praise, no. Because we see some evil thing going on all around us. And it seems like nobody cares. But if you pray and fast and see God's face, he will hear from heaven. And he will forgive our sin. Now our sin need to be forgiven. We're full of sin. Our country is full of sin. Something which is accepted. Some wrong thing. Some evil thing. Little children. Get one sex change. Confuse demon. He confused them. Confuse gender. It's time to turn back to God. Confuse. You see, if you, if you have the same gender sleeping with, then you are confused. But God is able to deliver you. God still loves you. And his arms still outstretched. Waiting for you to repent. And turn back to who God has made you to be. The respectable man that God gave to a woman. It's something special to be a man. It's something wonderful that God has given man. That when God made you, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And he make them one, Adam and Eve. So if you turn back to God and be that man, that father that God called you to be. To have children, a wife and children, a home, a family. You will be blessed of God. God bless those who are obedient. We don't know what tomorrow might bring. Last week we see what happened in Israel. They were sleeping in the bed. They were two of the same, maybe sleeping in a bed, we never know. But if you die in that condition, I want to let you know that hell is forever. They have no peace forever. They have no hope in hell. The Bible talks about so much in hell about the book of Revelation. Some people don't even want to go there. And Jesus in his sermon talks so much about hell. He's not willing that any should suffer in hell, in domination, forever. But that all should come to repentance. But if you repent today and say, Lord Jesus, I don't want to go to that place of torment forever. I want to have peace. I want to have this joy that the world can't give. I want to have this peace that the world can't give. Eternal hope with Jesus forevermore. Joy in the presence of the Lord forevermore. But in hell, Jesus said, when the worm dieth not and the fire quench it not. I always have to warn of the consequences of hell. Because so many people I know, by the life they live, we know where they spend eternity. And today some of us doing some little things that believe that God didn't see you. You're doing some wrong thing what you know is wrong. You're doing some wrong paperwork. Some wrong thing. The tithes you're not paying and all of those things. And the Bible tells us some, some people will never head to heaven. Revelation 21 and 8. No man with man. No woman with woman, no fornicator, no liar, no thief, or any evil thing what is not in the Bible, what the Bible condemns. None of these sins can enter heaven. No liar, no thief, none of these things. No robbery, especially lying. Lying is like you kill somebody. You lie on them until justice kills them. And then they died. So lying lips are abomination. Abomination unto the Lord. Stinks into his nostril. 
You don't have to commit fornication. No fornicator, no liar, no evil, no evil deeds, no, no promiscuous behavior, promiscuous sex. Sex change, you can be changed, you can be healed, you can be delivered, and God can turn things around for you. Today, where do you stand? If tonight you go to bed and didn't wake up by tomorrow, where would you spend eternity? But today you are still breathing. And now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. If you should say, Lord Jesus, I, I don't want to punish in hell forever. I want to have this hope that the world can't give. I want to have this peace and this joy. And knowing that I'm feeling content to know that I'm saved. To know that I repent of my sins. And you will show my sins. As kind of Psalm 103 and 10. I will show your sins into the sea of forgetfulness. And remember them no more. The moment you have Jesus come into my heart and save me. He will hear your prayer. He will hear you cry. He will hear your humble cry. Lord, come into my heart, Lord. I want to be saved. I don't want to go to this place of torment where there's heat and torment. No rest in my soul forever. No peace. Some people can't even stand a little crushing on the toe or the finger. But in hell, you've got many crushing day and night. No peace, no joy. If you're out there and you're hungry and you have pain and you're sick, you can go to the emergency. If you're hungry, you can come home and have peace. If you're hot, you can get water to drink. If you're cold, you can get peace in your home and heat. But there's none of that in hell. It's hot, torment, scorching. Some people would be the lake of fire. Some people do some abominable sin, like killing, cheating, and wickedness will burn in the lake of fire. Can you imagine somebody burning and burning and burning and there's no hope? Sometimes you toast. Burn and you, you go to the doctor, they cut it off and you get peace. But your whole body will be cast into hell and torment forever. I'm warning somebody of the consequences of hell. I love you, but Jesus loves you more. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repent and throw up your hand today and say, Lord Jesus, I want to get rid of these jugs and, and these fornicators and these lying ways and this junkiness. I want to get rid of them. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Oh God, here am I, Lord. I throw my hands up. Come into my heart. Save me, Lord. Let me to know that I have this hope that goes behind the grave. And if you just say that today and believe with your heart that God is Savior, you can have this peace. God bless you. I hope to see you one day in heaven. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Carter.